Hey guys, and welcome to Solid Rock Center Service Online. We're so glad to have you join us today. We are a multicultural, multi-generational church based in Inchicore, Dublin 8. And we're so happy to have you here with us today. Hebrews 10.25 encourages us to not forsake the gathering of the saints. So today, I encourage you to like, comment, share, and engage with today's service. We're about to start, so share the link and stay tuned.
morning church, can we please be on our feet, we're about to start, and for one minute just walk up to your neighbor and just welcome them to church, so you're welcome to Solid Rock Church, I like what you're wearing, I like your earrings, I like your chain, I like your shoes, I like your bag, I like your dress, just welcome them to church and just give them a hug and just welcome them to church this morning, come on I like your scarf, I like, I like your weed, come on just celebrate them this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. This is Solid Rock. Welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. There's such an awesome presence already in the room. There's such an awesome presence already in the room. Just welcome them and hug on them. Love on them this morning. Love on them this morning. Somebody might just need a hug this morning. Just love on them this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Yeah, come on, love on them, love on them, love on them. That is what church is for. Love on them, hallelujah. Doesn't matter what you're going through, you have a family in us. Come and love on them, hallelujah. And why don't you just lift up your hands this morning and just thank Jesus for life. Just thank Jesus for life. Father, we thank you. Just thank Jesus for life. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for life. The life we live is not ours, but we live through Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Loco para da sande de bos. Yes, you made it through to the 10th year of the month. Father, we thank you for life. It's almost November. We thank you for life. We thank you for life. We're not ungrateful people. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and just thank him for life. Father, we are grateful. We do not take you for granted. We are grateful. We thank you for the air that we breathe, the eyes that we see with, the ears that we hear with, the legs that we walk with. Father, we are grateful. It is you. It is you that has done these great things in our lives and we are grateful. Grateful. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We are not ungrateful. We'll lift up our hands if we need to. We'll bow our hands if we need to. We we'll just want to thank you this morning. Father, this is solid rock and we are grateful. This is solid rock and we are grateful. This is solid rock and we are grateful. We just worship you this morning for all you have done. We worship you this morning for the gift of life. We glorify you this morning because it is you that has has done these things in our life we are standing today only because you made a way we are standing today only because you saw us through we are standing today but by the mercies of God but by the mercies of God we are not consumed but by the mercies of God we are not consumed come on open up your mouth and just let your worship out let him know that you are grateful let him know that you are grateful we worship you Jesus we thank you Jesus we are not I'm grateful people we thank you Jesus you are worthy of my praise you are worthy of my praise that is why we come this morning to adore the one who was and is and is to come he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah he's called the rose of Sharon he's called the lily of the valleys he's called the bright and morning star above all he's called Abba he's our father he's our father he's Abba father we worship you yeah. Oh, come on worship Abba come on worship Abba it's, it's, a, it's a grateful morning just lift your hands forget about what you went through your week and just love on Jesus Jesus I love you because you first loved me I love you because you first loved me he said this is real love not that we love him but because he loved us first we thank you Jesus we thank you for loving us unconditionally Thank you for loving us uh, without a reason. Thank you for loving us uh, without a reason. We are grateful, God. Just worship Him. Uh, worship Him this morning. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabba Baba Basha. Thank you, Jesus. And for one minute, just set your expectations right in this service this morning. I don't know what you're trusting or believing God for, but for one minute, just declare, I live here not the same way I came, but I live here transformed. I live here transformed in my mind. There's a renewal in my mind. As the word of God comes forth, I do not live the same way I came. I live here transformed in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're believing God for a baby. You're believing God for a new job. You're believing God for an open door. God is still in the business 
minute of making your dreams come true just for one minute declare it barabasa i live here pregnant i live here with a new baby i live here with a new job i live here filled with the goodness of god because he daily loads us with benefits i live here with the benefit for today in the name of jesus i set my expectation right there is no doubt there is no fear there is no guilt i set my expectation right i receive of your fullness in this service in the name of jesus father we thank you thank you jesus just lift your hands for one minute father we thank you we know that beyond what we ask think or imagine is what you will do in this service we thank you because our lives are transformed we thank you because the word of god comes with power and with boldness in the name of jesus we thank you because everyone lives here with an answer to their prayers in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen come on just lift up your hands all over this room don't lose focus yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, just exalt your Savior. All over this room, lift up your hands unto the Savior. I will love your presence, Lord. How we love your presence, oh God. How we love you don't need an invitation into the presence of God. His presence is already here. Oh, yeah. Oh 
want nothing else I want nothing else but you I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Said nothing else, or nothing else will do. Oh, I just want you. Oh, said nothing else will do. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. No, no, no. Oh, nothing else will do. Nothing else. And I just want you.
that is all. the center of it all. Come on and start to, to pray to him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him what a beautiful name you have, oh God. Jesus, Yeshua. Nothing compares to your great name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we praise your great name. Come on, you're not here for anybody else but Him. You're not here for anybody else but your Maker, Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach. The Great I Am. The name above any other name. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Prince of Peace. Come on and tell Him sweet nothings. Tell Him, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, it's all about you. Jesus, no one can compare to you. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Jesus, uh, thank you for my life. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Jesus, uh, what a beautiful name you have, Jesus. Uh, how worthy is your name, Jesus. Uh, how powerful is your name, Jesus. Uh, Yes, you are. Demons tremble when they hear your name, Jesus. Uh, mountains move. 
the master of the universe, we worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Come on, raise your sound, raise your voice. Let me hear you make some Holy Ghost noise. Come on. Welcome the King of the Lord. The King of glory is here today. The atmosphere of the Lord is beginning to change. The Spirit of God is here today. I can feel the Lord's presence in this place. I can feel the Lord's presence in this atmosphere. So raise your hands, raise your voice. Come on, welcome the King of glory. Come on, welcome the Alpha and Omega. Come on, welcome the beginning and the end. Oh Lord, we welcome and we worship you, Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. You know, we've been learning for the past couple of Sundays about identity, you know that? And I just want to say that, you know, with faith, Jesus was able to calm the stormy sea into a peaceful one. Jesus, it wasn't, he just didn't do that because he was a son of God. He did it because he understood the authority that he operated in. And with that faith, I want us to key into that and believe that when we raise our voice, when we raise our worship, we can say mountain be moved and mountain will be moved. We can say sickness be healed and sickness will be healed. We can say depression, flee and depression will go. So this morning, I want you to key into that same faith, into the same authority that Jesus had. And I want you to just raise your worship and say the atmosphere is changing. The spirit of the Lord is here right now. The spirit of the Lord is here right now. The evidence is all around me that the spirit of the Lord is here right now. Come on, come on, raise your voice, raise your worship. Raise your voice, raise your worship. Say, mountain be moved. Mountain be moved. I declare mountain be moved. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, for the power and the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord.
Come on, le poroso tele bos, turn that into a prayer this morning. Makora basan de lege bos, because God is the greatest power. Mako baraso begadi, masanda gadagaba. I will never be defeated. I will never be defeated. I will never be defeated. Mare ko samra dagabaya, le ko san de lego do bosa. I will never be defeated. Le ko ragabasa gabadagabaya. In your business, you will never be defeated. In your family, you will never be defeated. Re ko soko para gadabasa. In Jesus mighty name we've prayed as they show us as they show us Romans 8 32 just grab the hand of a neighbor if you're with your spouse you can hold your spouse if you didn't come with your spouse or you're not married yet you can just grab the hand of a neighbor thank you Holy Ghost we're going to be praying this morning Romans 8 32 it said he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all he said how will he not also along with him graciously do what give us all things so he would graciously give us what all things you're going to pray for that your neighbor i don't know what you're trusting god for but what for what you're believing god for if god already gave us jesus there is nothing he cannot give to you if you already gave us jesus the job can come if you already gave us jesus the baby can come so you're going to declare over the life of that person that i declare i don't know what the care is i don't know what the need is but i declare this morning it is coming through it won't be long it won't be long it won't be long you will testify it won't be long love them enough to pray for them i might not see the tears you cry at night but i serve a god who sees all who knows all and if he gave us jesus there is nothing he will not give to you for the next one minute just pour into that person's life and declare your sorrows are turned to joy in the name of jesus you walk into prepared blessings in the name of jesus thank you holy ghost jesus is coming through for you in this season in jesus mighty name of free finally you're going to be praying for strength for that person i don't know what you've been through there are people that are tired they're just tired They've tried and tried and it doesn't seem to be working and they're tired. But we're going to declare over our lives this morning and declare that the strength of God is coming over you. In the name of Jesus. So turn that into a prayer this morning. The strength of God comes over you this morning. The Bible said, and Sarah received strength. The strength to give birth to your dreams and your visions. The strength of God comes over your life, comes over your business, comes over your family. I know you have been disappointed. I know you have been looked down on. I know you have been talked about. But the strength of God comes upon your life. And you live through walls and run through troops. In the name of Jesus, the story you will tell will be that God came through for me. 
that God strengthen me. Rakase ilada basata le kombra gada basha le konde soya. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you because we are strengthening our inner man. Yes, 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 yes. Your spirit man is strengthened. You receive strength to pray again. Strength to believe again. Strength to trust again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Come on with Jesus. Join your heart. Just put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Come on, clap for Jesus. Come on, come on. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday is Hello, coming. Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical October, Alliance and Ireland and this is our up. weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. We are now well into the month of October and at the end of this month, we have the National Praise Day happening again on the 31st of October. Now, this is a day we've been holding for several years. A number of ministries and churches came together to say we wanted to glorify God, to glorify Jesus, to lift up life and to lift up light on a day that Halloween is so often dedicated to darkness and death and destruction and witchcraft. And so we've been holding the National Praise Day in uh, in various ways through the pan pandemic and so on. And uh, we had a great concert last year. And this year we're holding a National Praise Day concert again. It's on the evening of Tuesday, 31st of October. Now, we've had to change the venue from what was previously announced. Uh, and so the new venue is at Solid Rock Dublin in Golden Bridge Industrial Estate in Inchicore. So Solid Rock Dublin in Inchicore. It starts at 6 p.m. And we're going to have lots of bands and choirs and worship teams taking part. And we've also got Noel Robinson and his band. Uh, many of you, if you, were, if you managed to make it to the Leading the Way event with Michael Youssef in the National Convention Centre, in the Dublin Convention Centre, you, you'll have seen Noel Robinson and his band leading worship. And they're joining us here for National Praise Day on, on Tuesday, 31st of October. And I hope you will join us too. You know, I just returned. I actually returned late last night from a, a trip to Turkey. I was at a World Evangelical Alliance conference in Istanbul. Great time strategizing and planning with evangelical leaders from around the globe. But, uh, but you know, being Turkey, it's an Islamic country. And uh, in my, from my hotel room, at various times of day and night, I could hear the, the loudspeaker crab, cranking up from the mosque and the, the call to prayer going out. You know what? I discovered something. I discovered that uh, trying to draw the curtains, trying to close the windows couldn't blot out that noise. Turning up the... The Lord Jesus. Come on, Solid Rock. Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. So that is our National Day of Praise taking place this Tuesday. If you can make it, please do. Amen. Hi, I'm here to give you your announcements for the upcoming week. Um, on Sundays, we have our time of prayer in the upper room at 10 a.m. It is led by our amazing Elder, Elder Michael and Elder Lola. So if you can avail yourself at 10 a.m., please join us in the upper room upstairs. Um, on Mondays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., we have our Zoom prayer. Um, if you can avail yourselves for that, please um, do links are sent by ad by the solid rock admin if you are not part of that please let one of the um, people know at the admin desk out front they'll be able to supply you with a link for our zoom call and um, we also have our family group fellowships that take place throughout the week in different parts of dublin if you are not part of a family fellowship i really encourage you to join one and um to let um 
whoever is in your sector, whether it be in Nace or Blanchestown or Tala, let them know that you would like to be part of the weekly family um, fellowships. Um, our next announcement is for Wednesdays at 12 p.m. from 2 p.m. We have our food bank. Our food bank is something that is so amazing that was started in this church to supply needs to anyone who is in need can come if you need anything even if you just want to fellowship invite people over it's from 12 to 2 p.m on wednesdays every week in solid rock center um we now just have a few special announcements can i hear the youth oh wow is there any young people in the house is there any young people in the house is there any young people in the house? Okay, so our young adults and youth committee have come, have gathered together and they will be hosting a youth lock-in and it will be on the 4th of November from 9, for, sorry, from the 3rd of November at 9 p.m. until the 4th of November until 10 a.m. I know from one night, from you're going from the night till the morning, but look, God will sustain you honestly and truly. I remember when I used to do things like this and you would come back so energized and revived. The word is going to be preached. The word is going to be spoken. If you would like your um, son or daughter to take part in this on the 3rd of November, please speak to Victor, who is heading our youth department. Um, we encourage every single youth to come and invite a friend. Ready Registration is through Eventbrite or speak to Victor to register. It costs five euro, five euro, only five euro, guys. So if you are a mother, a father, a brother or sister, you have somebody younger from the ages of 13 to 17, please encourage them to come to the lock-in. And finally, let's give it up for the our pastor, Pastor Emmanuel Mike. Can you guys just give him a big clap? Come on, you guys can do better than that. Give a shout. Come on, appreciate the man of God. Appreciate the man and woman of God. Hallelujah. So on the 5th of November, we are having our pastor's appreciation. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> we're having our pastor's appreciation and we're coming just to celebrate um, apostle Emmanuel might bet you didn't know that he's an apostle hallelujah so um please we encourage you all to come with um just come give thanksgiving we want to thank and bless um the family the might family for all that they do for us for um shepherding us for guiding us for leading us for teaching us and for helping us to actually grow in our journey so that's the 5th of november one more time give it up for apostle emmanuel might amen um and that is all for the announcements thank you so much solid rock church yeah I am so excited bringing you this report from Brazil. And I want to thank you for being always a great support, releasing me to go out to the nations. Uh, Saints, I am so excited bringing you this report from Brazil. And I want to thank you for being always a great support, releasing me to go out to the nations and be a blessing. Doors are massively open to, 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 to us in this nation. But so far, I have been uh, speaking in five different cities, crusades and conferences or conventions. I've been to Paragominas, I've been to Ananidioa, I've been to uh, Iquarasi. Iquarasi, I've been to Im Imperatriz, I've been to Para. Gominas. Bajerinha. Bajerinha. Yes. Bajerinha. Thank you. I've been to Bajerinha and uh, my God. And these distances, some of them are like 2,000 kilometers from each other in one state. It's been an amazing, amazing experience. Lives have been touched. I've, I've, I've met one of the fathers of the faith in this nation. And what a blessing that he prayed for me. I prayed for our church in Ireland. And I want you to know, saints, that with every sacrifice we make, every prayer, whatever we do for the kingdom of God, these are the effects. And I'm so glad that I don't come out here just on my own. I have a conglomeration of people that are standing in prayer and in support with me. And I know that for every life that is being touched, 
every life that is being transformed souls that are being encouraged that the blessing goes not only to me it comes to all of us and the glory goes to our heavenly father so i'm in one of the biggest facilities of the assemblies of god in this country and this is an amazing facility with swimming pool uh, they have a ministry for street people they have sport complex and then they have this facility this massive massive facility that takes 5,000 people and I've been asked to come back here for a, a, a conference a convention next year uh, by God's grace God's good all the time God's good amen very quickly let's receive our offering today uh, I would like us to read in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16 verse 17 Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 17 all must give as they are able according to the blessings given to them by the Lord our God all must give as they are able according to the blessings given to them by the Lord our God amen so the word of God teach us that we should offer back to God according to what he has given to us as a blessing. Amen. As an act of gratitude. It's not that we are trying to pay him back. Nothing that I can do. You pay God back what he did in the cross of Calvary. Send his son to die on a place of the cross of Calvary. But it's an act of gratitude. Is God being good to you? Say it again. We can do better. Is God being good to you? Yes. We can in an act of gratitude then give back to God so prepare our offering today if you are watching us online you can give us uh, through the, the, the PayPal the IBA number that we have here we have all the bank details we have the POS machine in the reception we have also uh, envelopes you want to, for a cash giver so give a good offering today returning to God thanking God for everything that he's been doing to, to you this is the year of testimonies. Amen. This is the year of testimonies. Every Sunday we hear people coming to the stage and seeing and talking about the goodness of God. What God is doing. Amazing things in our, in our lives. As a church. As a nation. As the church of God around the world. We just heard testimonies of pastor preaching for 2,000 people in Brazil. And this is all supported by us. He only can travel to this country because we support his ministry. So this morning, we encourage you to give generously as God has been good to you. Amen. Let's pray. Stand up and offer to God. The ushers will be serving you if you need to be served in, in uh, giving by cash, uh, for a cash giver, giving uh, through the envelopes. Father, we ask this morning, Father, for your favor, Father, we Thank you for everything that you have been doing in our lives, Father. We thank you for the amazing testimony that we are listening to, Father, and to encourage us to be more and more closer to you, Father, because we know that you paid the price for us, for our salvation, the cross of Calvary, and so forth. Because of that, we are grateful, Father. We are grateful this morning. Bless every offering this morning. Bless every soul that is coming to you through your ministry, Father. And you know that much more you are yet to do in your midst. Bless us as a church, Father. Bless us as individuals. And as we do so, and as we give our offerings today, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just while we give our offerings, um, so we all know that next Sunday is our Pastor's Appreciation Sunday. So this year we're doing something a little bit different because we're woke and we're a new generation. We want everybody to have um, an opportunity to appreciate pastor personally. So we're doing it in two ways. The first way is there's going to be a kudo board. It's one fresh thing that my friend taught me about. So it's called kudo board. A link will be sent to you. It's not scam. It's from the church. You're going to see a picture of some of our members that you know and pastor's face. So it's not scam. It's from the church. If you click into that link, you have three options. Put up a picture write something nice or put up a video I feel like words are powerful so 30 seconds that's all you need love on pastor E minds and pastor E minds the pastor E squared minds you love on them tell them what you want to say to them we recognize that every year we appreciate our pastors not everyone gets the chance to come on stage to say something nice so this year we're leaving it open to everybody click on the link drop your message 
and we promise you he's going to listen to all of them. He's going to could up and chill on Sunday evening with his wife and go through all of the nice messages that she sent. The other part is on Sunday, you get a chance to bring in a physical gift if you want to. So you have like one week. Go to all your shopping carts. Look for what you want to buy. Arrange whatever gift you want to give. So you get a chance to physically give it to them if you wanted to do that. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd update us. Get it rolling. You know, your kudobot has to go in before he sees it. So that means it has to be done by at least by Saturday. So it's just 30 seconds. It won't take time. And I know some of, some of us are not very tech savvy. Don't worry. We have a sister in the house. I'm not even sure if I've told her, but she retweet. She can help you get it sorted. Is that okay? So if you need help, give us a shout. We'll help you sort it out. Just 30 seconds. Put a nice video. Tell them how you feel about them. Love on them. Bless them. Pray for them. And God bless you. In Jesus' name. Morning, church. Morning, church. Look, uh, my name is Ethan Book. Most of you know me. So, um, the Lord had blessed us as a group to develop what we call total enrichment uh, within the church. They say my people suffer for lack of knowledge because uh, when you go out into the world, you hear the word of God, you listen to the word of God, it enriches you, it empowers you. But when you go out into the world, you still need to understand how the world works, right? And you still need to, and we've been given a dominion money to dominate the world. Now, there are certain things that we need to understand as people of God in terms of our workplace, in terms of our finances and businesses. And that's why Total Enrichment was developed through the help of the pastor. Now, we are organizing our second event for the year. It's going to be on the 25th, 25th of November, between 12 to 3 um, p.m. Now, we have people from companies that will come in, like Enterprise Island, uh, Communication Limited, who will be coming to talk about things like acing your interviews, how, if you're an entrepreneur, how to move your business to the next level, how to move your career to the next level. Last time, we got people from the finance industry that came and talked about how to buy your second home. And to the glory of God, after that conference, people have bought their homes. So this is not something to just say, ah, oh, that's another event. Or if you come, you will be blessed and you will move to the next level. So I really encourage you on the 25th of November, please do attend, right? The one thing I don't want to see is people from outside come to fill up the church. That's the one thing. I'm not saying I don't want them to come. Let them come. But I really, really want to see the church represented and gaining from this. Some of these people take a lot of money when they come to do events like this. The event is free. There's no registration or anything like that, but do come, okay? So I just want to encourage us, and on the 25th of November, for us to come and learn and, you know, move our careers, our businesses into the next level. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, God has been so faithful to us. Uh, we all know Pastor is away, but thank God he's in Portugal at the moment. He's preaching this morning, taking his flight back home. And uh, so we'll be having him tonight back in the country. So um, I just want to announce this for people who want to do water baptism that the 26th of November, which is a Sunday, we will be having a water baptism in here that Sunday. So if you want to have water baptism, please. After the service, will you kindly go to the admin, put down your name for, for water baptism, please. Okay. How many people are ready for the word of God? Are we ready for the word of God? I'm telling you, the word of God is God. And each time God has to speak to us, it's always a privilege. I want you to prepare your heart this morning. We have Pastor Shemons with us here this morning that is going to bring the word. I tell you, we have known him now for 20 years, isn't it? We've known him for 20 years. He is uh, among the first, I would call the police or gather in this country that I got his number. He was the first person. So if some of you know him like someone that came after you, might be to, because of crime or anything, coming to pick you up, he is here today as your brother to love on you. So don't run away. You know, if you have listened to Pastor Nick's story, 
His testimony of salvation is so amazing. So if you see him today, if you have met him in the court or somewhere, so he stopped you on the way or anything had happened, he's not coming for that today. He's just coming to love on you. So he is the assistant pastor of uh, Solid Rock Drawheader and also the assistant national, are you the, uh, assistant national um, overseer for the church of God. He assists Pastor Nick. And, you know, God is so faithful that we have people, people like him. He's such a humble person. People like him that they understand the system. People that understand, someone that has been, he has like a, a good post as a police in this country, but his heart is after Jesus. He's so humble to serve God. So we are privileged to have him this morning. I want Solid Rock Dublin to give him, uh, um, make him feel welcome in this place this morning as he comes up. He's looking for, can you, we welcome you here, Pastor Sherman. So let's just welcome and be very open to receive the word that God has prepared him this morning. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Evelyn. Praise God. It's so good to be with you today. I've met several friends on my way in and made a few new ones, which is great. Praise God. Um, you know, the wonderful thing is this. God can even save policemen. <laughs> and I'm so happy that that's true because I needed it. Believe me. But you know, he takes the rejected things, he takes the most despised things, and he turns them into something good, doesn't he? And you know, there's hope for all of us. And I've been so blessed here this morning by the worship, by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I, I just want to thank Pastor Evelyn and Pastor Emmanuel for inviting me here and to appreciate them this morning. I know you all know them very well. I think I knew them before you did. And we could see the hand of God on them from the very moment they arrived. God had a plan and a purpose. And my goodness, is he fulfilling it through this couple? He really is, isn't he? So we give you um, honor today, and I'm, I'm humbled to stand where you two stand just for a moment today in, in your footsteps. And I just say, Lord... I have nothing of myself. All I have this morning is what God does in me and through me. Uh, I'm nobody special, but you know, when the Spirit of the Lord comes on us, He does amazing things. So I am looking forward to what He's going to do this morning. He's already done so much. Uh, I was so touched by the presence of God when I was in the worship time. I think you know what I mean. There was a real presence of the Holy Spirit, and, and we sang, the atmosphere is changing because the Spirit of the Lord is here. And Lord, I just thank you that your Spirit is here. And, and, and before I start, Lord, I ask that you would anoint me, that you would use me, that, Lord, you would somehow enable me to speak the words that you want to speak to every heart here this morning. And I'm just so overwhelmed with the love of God this morning and with his mercy. I know he wants to touch you today. I know he wants to change many hearts this morning. And, and I know even out in cyberland that we've been broadcast this morning that God is doing something right where you are. And I believe he's given me a word that he wants you to hear. Um, it's been on my heart over the last few days, and on arriving here this morning, it's just become much more, it, it's become much more evident that God wants to do a work in many hearts. You know, God loves you. God loves you, and he wants you to know that today. And I believe there's many people in pain who are listening to my voice this morning, and you're hiding it very well, but God's heart is breaking for what is troubling you today, and he wants you to know that. But he doesn't want you to leave here with those troubles. He wants to do something, and he's going to do something. And before I finish here today, he will have done something in Jesus' name. Amen. 
When Jesus took the scroll of Isaiah and spoke in the temple for the first time during his ministry, he read from what we now know as Isaiah 61. And as we were praying and, and, and worshiping, the Lord really put this on my heart to speak. It wasn't something I was planning, but I really believe the Lord wants to, me to say this today in faith, that the Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord, he has anointed me this morning to preach good tidings to the poor, and he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison doors to those who are bound. I really feel this is a word from God, and that I just ask he enables me to bring it to you in the way that he wants me to say it, so just pray with me for that. Because God wants to open prison doors today. He wants to tell you that you're accepted by him. And he wants you to know that he wants to comfort you and to restore peace in your life and to bring a sense of his love and his acceptance and his power to move and to work in your hearts this morning. That's what he wants to do. So Holy Spirit, come and do your will and work in Jesus' name. As I was praying, um, the word I got was, it's time to leave the valley. And this might sound a strange word, but I want to read from the book of Ezekiel in chapter 37. And some of you will be familiar with this. It speaks about the valley of dry bones. And I'm going to read the first 11 verses, and then I'm going to get into the message. So the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and, I and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a loud noise. Yes, a noise. A rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried out and hope is gone. We are cut off. The Lord has put in my heart that here in this room today, some of you are like dried bones, lifeless, cut off, separated, and without life in the spirit. I believe that that is true, and the Lord wants to do something about it. You know, many churches over the COVID period had to close, and people were unable to move, they were unable to visit, they were unable to meet up with their friends. Businesses closed. We were told where we could walk, what we could do, who we could meet. It was a tough time. And during that time, many people were really stretched and found themselves really in a difficult place. And the difficulty with it is this, that quite a lot have never reconnected 
There's some who were here during those days that you don't see anymore. And there are some who are listening to me online who have not come back to church and who are disconnected, not involved, and who feel defeated. You see, the valleys in, in Scripture very often depict a place of defeat and of loss and of where people are pushed down and depressed, where battles are lost and armies are slain. And we often see mountaintops as the place of success and the place of victory and the place where the shouting is done. Amen. So today, if you're in the valley, you've come to the right place because God says you're not staying there any longer. Amen. You're not going to be disconnected any longer. God wants to change defeat into victory, and he can do it. You know, during COVID, we had a message of fear. Every time you turned on the media, it was fear. But fear is the opposite to faith, and we are people of faith, amen? And you know, the Word of God says, without faith, we cannot please Him. Isn't that true? But we are people of faith. And He says that if we ask for faith, He will give it to us. He will help us increase it, even a little bit. You know, He speaks about a mustard seed, and He says, if you have faith like a mustard seed... You can do amazing things. But a mustard seed grows, doesn't it? A seed grows. When you plant a seed, a plant grows and produces more. And this morning, the Lord is saying to you, it's time to sow that little bit of faith that you've got because I want to multiply it and grow it and bring you into the situation that I want you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, the Word of God says that He has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of love and of power and of a sound, well-ordered mind. Amen? That's what He wants for us today. He wants to reconnect us. We need each other. A body doesn't function well without all its parts. As church, we are the body of Christ. But we read in Scripture that each one of us is like a part of the body, amen? Each one of us has a function. A finger has a function. A hand doesn't operate very well without fingers, does it? We don't walk very well without our feet or our legs. Why am I saying this? Because if you are not functioning in the way that God has ordained and assigned you to function within the body of Christ, then a part of that body is missing, and the entire body is impacted in a negative way. Have you ever thought of that? So when you withhold the gift that you are to church, you are actually robbing the church of your gift. Do you realize each one of you has giftings from the Holy Spirit? If you're born again, if you've received the Holy Spirit, He's given you gifts. But He doesn't give you gifts just for yourself or to hide them away. He wants you to bring that gift to the body and to elevate the body and to play your part. And when everyone does that, there's a mighty power at work in the body. Amen? What part are you? today? And are you functioning as part of the body? That's a question only you can answer. But here's what God says. The just shall live by faith. And if anyone draws back, I have no joy in him. Think about that. God wants a dynamic relationship with you today. He wants to know all about you. He wants you to be intimate with him. He's interested in every aspect of your life. He wants you to come into his presence and to be intimate with him, to share what's going on, to ask for what you need, to bring praise and worship, to hang out with him. Have you ever thought about that? 
Anyone hang out with their friends? Our young people here, surely you hang out with your friends, yeah? It's good. You have fun. You encourage each other. You can't wait to meet up again. This is how God wants us to be with him. He wants us to spend time with him. Why? Because he loves us and he enjoys our presence. He sees us as valuable and people that he wants to invest into. He says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. I believe this morning the Lord is saying, some of you have drawn back, but today he wants you to draw near so that he can meet with you again, enjoy your presence, enjoy your company, and see the joy of the Lord grow in your heart. Amen? Praise you, Jesus. You know, Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Have you thought about that? If you're not connected, you're not getting the resources and the nourishment and the food that you need. You see, it's not so important why you're disconnected, but if you are disconnected, then you're in the valley, then you're dry, then you're cut off. And today the Lord is saying, it's time to get out of that valley and to be reconnected and to be revitalized and to be back where he wants you in relationship. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 speaks about the cloud of witnesses. And the Lord, over those, over 4,000 years, he refers to various individuals, both men and women. And the one common denominator in each of them is they were people of faith. They had faith. That was the one thing that God pointed out. And he was pleased. Amen. Why am I telling you this? Because none of them were perfect. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel very good. None of them were perfect. God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for people of faith. Abraham, mighty man of faith, he messed up. He was afraid. He lied. He didn't believe God, but he came back in faith and trusted God and became a father of mighty nation. Amen. David, David, one of the men God said is a man after my own heart, he committed adultery and murder, but yet God restored him because his heart was right and he was full of faith. Amen. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel, wow, maybe he can use me too. For the ladies here, Rahab is mentioned in Jesus' lineage. And Rahab was a prostitute. There's no barriers in God's kingdom if you come to him in faith. Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning. It's not about perfection, but it's about keeping going with the Lord. Don't draw back. The Lord is saying this morning, if you've drawn back and in, your, in that valley today, if you're like one of those disconnected bones, you need to hear the voice of God today because he's really desiring to blow his breath back into your life and to reconnect you, to re-empower you, to set you on fire for him. Amen. So what happens if you draw back? It means you stop, you withdraw a wee bit. You know, this morning, somewhere in Dublin, there's a load of people lining up to run the Dublin City Marathon. Maybe they're already started. It's a long race, over 26 miles. But most of those runners, even though they're going to go through struggles and pain and difficulties and really having a challenge in their minds about keeping going, they're going to finish that race because they have set their eyes on something that they want to achieve. Amen. So as Christians, 
we are called to run the race that God has set before us. He's calling us to that. Whoever you are this morning, God has a purpose and a plan and an assignment for your life. And he's calling you this morning, get back in the race. Get running. Run with perseverance, the word of God says, the race set before us. Don't stop. Keep going. He will empower you to do that. Now, there are many reasons why people draw back. And if you do draw back, it might seem like initially nothing changes. But little by little, your heart can grow cold. And the joy of your salvation can be reduced and go. God wants you to be back in the race and have a passion for him. If you lose God's presence and the sense of his presence, you lose joy. And the word of God says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? Amen. And you also lose authority. You see, when I was a policeman, I was under authority. Therefore, I had power. So I could, wearing my uniform, step out in the road and hold my hand up. And I had the power to require a car to stop and to speak with the driver and all of those things, as an example. However, when I retired, if I had an old uniform hiding in a wardrobe at home, and I put it on, and I stepped out on the road, some people might be fooled by it, but sooner or later, it become clear that my authority was gone, wouldn't it? And once people found that out, would they obey anything I said or did? Not a, not a chance. The same applies if I stayed in bed all day. I could have all the power and authority, but if I stayed in bed and didn't go out and do anything, I made no impact on the world around me at all, did I? So people could carry on doing all the things they shouldn't do because I had abdicated my position. Now, the Lord is calling this morning and saying, if any of these apply to you, it's time to get back. It's time to get out of that valley. It's time to be reconnected. You see, we have an enemy, and the Word of God says he's like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour. And what he likes to do is to get those who are in isolation, who have no one around them, who have no one to lift them up and encourage them. And then, because they're vulnerable, he can take advantage of them. So if that is you today, and if you're withdrawing, you're not being encouraged, you're not connected, you're not in a relationship with God, then you're vulnerable in that way. And the Lord wants to do something about that with you today. So I'm saying this morning, watch and don't drop your guard, okay? Are you with me? This is particularly important in families. Very often, and I'm going to speak to our men this morning, sometimes we take the eye off the ball and we step back in our faith and we're not the men of God that we're called to be. What that actually does is it not only exposes us, but our families then are vulnerable because the covering that we are supposed to provide is not in place. So I want to speak to you men this morning. If this applies to you, it's not just about you. It's also about your wives, your families, your children, maybe even your grandchildren. Because God has put you in a position of authority and a position where you can influence what's going on in your family. And if you step out of that role, like the policeman who stays in bed, the enemy has a field day. So it's time. It's time to wake up, get up, and get going. Amen? Amen. So what happens if you become isolated? There's two um, scriptures I just want to quickly refer to. The first one is in 1 Kings 18 and 19. And I'm not going to read them because we don't have time this morning. But it's about the prophet Elijah. Now, Elijah was first of all called as an intercessor for the people of Israel. And secondly, he was called to restore the nation back as a prophet, to restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the father. So what was happening in his day was families had broken down, fathers had 
lost their positions. They weren't serious about their role as the spiritual heads. Everything was going wrong. Men had become effeminate. Men had stepped out of their positions. And they were following after false gods. In fact, there were 450 prophets of Baal and one Elijah who was serving God. And they had a showdown on Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal and Elijah both built an altar. Now, some of you know this story. Some of you may not. But essentially what happened was they agreed that the God who demonstrated his power by fire was really God. So the prophets of Baal spent a whole day trying to entice this so-called God to burn their sacrifice. But of course, no. Elijah, at the end of the day, said, right, if God is God, you're going to have to serve him and I'm going to show you. He poured water on his sacrifice. He wet everything so that it was nearly impossible for a fire to be lit. And then he said, Lord, show us that you are God. And he did. And this sacrifice burst into flames, burned everything, including the water. Everything was burned. And clearly, God was demonstrated as God. And the prophets of Baal were actually put to death because the people realized that they were being led astray. Amen? But what happened next is what I want to get to, because Elijah then left the mountain, and the queen of the day was called Jezebel, who was the chief person serving this false god. And she sent a messenger and said, you are going to be like one of those that you killed. I stake my life on it, essentially. And what happened? He got scared. Elijah, the man of God, who stood before the whole people and the prophets, was filled with fear because he listened to a message from the enemy. And what he did then was he ran and he headed off out into the wilderness. He ended up sitting under a tree, feeling suicidal and said, Lord, take me now. I can't handle this. Why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because when we run from God, when we hide, when we isolate ourselves, we become vulnerable. And if that's you today, God is saying, I need you to come back because I want to restore you. I want to put you back in position. I want you to know I'm God. I'm for you. I'm not against you. I am your savior and your redeemer. And my power is the same today as it was yesterday and will always be. Amen? Yeah? You with me? So what happened? Elijah lost his spiritual position. He abandoned his role, and he concentrated on saving himself. And you know, that was the same message we got back during COVID, wasn't it? Save yourself. Isolate. Keep yourself away from potential injury and so forth to the point where people withdrew in many areas of lives, including their spiritual lives. But God wants to turn that around today. He's saying, I'm still God. I am for you. My power is the same as it always was. I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. I will never forsake you because I love you. Come back to me today. Amen? Praise you, Lord Jesus. You see, God came to Elijah, and he revived him. And he wants to do the same for you. He wants to revive you. He wants to bring you back. In Matthew's gospel in chapter 24 and 25, and I just want to re refer to it quickly, Jesus was speaking in response to a question of, when will we know the end of the age is at hand? And I'd encourage you maybe read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, because he gives a few pointers which help us to understand the progression of the age. And here, irrespective of your views on that, I think we could all agree that we're nearer to Jesus' return today than we were when he spoke those words. Would you agree with that? He is coming back. 
You know, it wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger as Terminator who first said, I'll be back. Jesus said, I will be back. And he is truth. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. When he says, I'm coming back, he is coming back. And he's coming back for a bride. He's coming back for a church. He's coming back for people who love him and who are committed and who are still standing when he returns. And that's the call to us today. Amen? So the Word of God says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. It's a heart matter. And God is interested in our heart today. So I want to wonder, what happened in your heart over the last season? Are you still committed to the assignment God has given you? Or have you become a bit wobbly maybe? Not quite so sure anymore. Started out well, sprinting, and now you're kind of slowed down and taking a rest. God is saying today, I want you back in the race. I want you out of that valley. And he does. So we have a mandate. Do you realize that? We have a mandate. In Matthew chapter 24, he speaks about two servants. One servant... He does what he was asked to do. Master goes away, leaves two servants in charge. One of them continues to do what he was asked to do. He is found still feeding the people, still serving the master when the master returns. The second one, well, he started out well. He did fairly well for a while, but then he got bored. He began to drink and hang out with the lads, lost his position, and when basically said, Sure, he might never come back. No, no need to be killing myself here. And when the master came back, he found him having abandoned his position. And what happened? He was severely punished. The next portion of, in Matthew 25 refers to five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. All of them have lamps. All of them have oil. Now, we know in, in uh, scriptural terms, oil often represents the Holy Spirit. So these people, all ten were serving the Lord. All ten had received the Holy Spirit. All ten had an assignment from the Lord. The wise ones, it tells us, had refills. They came prepared. They weren't going to run out of oil. If the master or the bridegroom didn't appear soon, they weren't worried because they continually refilled their lamps and kept them burning. Amen? And I believe the Lord would say to you this morning, are you continually being refilled this morning? Or have you just kind of sat back, allowed your lamp to go dim, and uh, are not prepared for when the bridegroom appears. Because if that's you, it's too late when he comes to start looking for oil again. We need to be constantly in the presence of God in prayer, in intercession, and receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, allowing him to minister to us. Just as we did this morning when the worship team were here, they were praising the Lord, and the presence of the Lord was refueling us, was stirring us, was getting our passion back in action. Amen? But if we're not doing that, we become dull, our light goes out, and when the bridegroom arrives, will we be ready? Will you be ready? Will I be ready? Because if we're not constantly in the presence of God, our oil could run out, and who wants that? And the final group were two servants and you probably have heard the story of the talents many times, but essentially, this is what I was talking about earlier. All five were given something from the Holy Spirit. All five received gifts and received investments, and they were asked to look after them in the absence of their master. And the one who got five, he made five more. So he used his investment wisely. He used his gifts to the glory of God. The one who got three did the same, but the one who got one, the Word of God tells us he buried it and did nothing with it. 
and therefore was unproductive, and he stopped serving, essentially. And the Word of God is challenging us. What are you doing with what God has invested in you? What are you doing? Because if you don't use the gifts he's given you, you're not going to get a return. And we are all called in Matthew 28, aren't we? He said, go into all the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tell them everything I did. Spread the good news. And I will be with you always as you do this. You know, that's not just for the preachers. It's not just for the worship team. It's not just for the greeters outside. It's not just for the, those who do um, welcoming. It's not just for Victor and John and Evelyn and Pastor Mike. No, it's for all of us. We're all called. We're all invested. God has put something in us, and he wants us to use it to his glory. Uh, to tell the good news. Tell them what God has done. Tell them what he's doing in your life. We all have testimony, and testimony is to give glory to God and to give the option and the hope that we have to others. Now, I'm going to move very quickly here because I want to spend some time in prayer this morning. But I believe that many here this morning, that some things have happened in your lives that have kind of stifled what God was doing. That there's disappointments. Some are disappointed. You were hoping for things. You were looking forward to them. You may even have promises, but they didn't happen. And because of disappointment, your heart has grown cold. I believe there's some here who have taken offense. Somebody in a position has offended you, whether that's out in the world or whether it's in church or whether it's a fellow believer or a family member. You've been offended and because of that offense, you are holding something against somebody. And the Word of God says when we do that, it's called unforgiveness. And when we don't forgive, then we are putting a blockage in place. And it prevents the Holy Spirit moving in the way he wants to move in our life. So he wants to deal with offense in our hearts this morning. And also fear. Fear. Many of us have had fear. We have fear of what people would say. You know, it's not necessarily popular to be a born-again Christian in our world. There's lots of things out in society that people want us to agree with, but because we know the Lord and we know his standards, we can't agree with or endorse them. Isn't that right? And many people then say that we are intolerant or that we are nasty, or that our speech is hateful, when in actual fact, we want them to know the love of God, and we want them to know the God who loves them, and we want them to know that there are things that can separate you from God. And if we don't tell them, then we are responsible for not telling them. But when we do tell them, they get upset, don't they? And that sometimes causes fear because we are afraid to open our mouths and say anything in case we become the subject of attack or a pushback, or maybe somebody is going to, to, to really take issue with us. But the Lord is saying today, I have not given you a spirit of fear. I've given you love. I've given you power. I've given you a sound mind. I've given you the ability to speak truth in love so that the world may know that I am their Savior, that I died for them, and that there is life and hope for everyone. And somehow we've become afraid to say that. And the Lord is saying, today, I want to deal with fear. I want to deal with offense, and I want to deal with disappointments. All of these things call us to pull back, to withdraw. But today, I believe Jesus is present. He is here by his Holy Spirit. And that he wants to do something amazing for all of us. Amen. So I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. 
And as the Lord leads, I'm going to invite you to begin quietly leading us in worship because we already sang that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Spirit, move in this place this morning. So I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and move and to restore people today. The bread of God still breathes into dry bones. Amen? The bread of God still puts flesh on those dry bones. The Spirit of God still breathes life into dry and thirsty lives. He does, and He will. So I'm not saying to you today, whatever's caused you to draw back, today is the day for restoration. Amen. Whatever it is in your life, just take a moment. If there's disappointment, if there's regret, if there's unforgiveness, if there's offense, if there's fear, I just want you to think about that for a moment. Just what is it that you need to bring before the Lord today? What is it that you need to exchange with the Lord today? Because he said he came that we would have life in all its fullness. Amen? So he wants to take all the nasty, all the offensive stuff, everything that holds us back, and he wants to replace that with his love, with his power, with his joy. Amen? So I'm going to say, to remember this, God is our refuge and our strength. He is our ever-present help in time of trouble. Do you believe that? He is always present to help and to deliver. And that's who he is today. So I'm going to invite you to come forward if you've had disappointments. If you've had disappointments in, in family life, maybe in marriage, maybe in work, loss of hope or loss of dreams, maybe something you earnestly wanted hasn't happened and it's really knocked you for six. Maybe some other Christian has disappointed you. It could even be a leader. It could be someone in church. It could be friends. It doesn't really matter. If you know you need healing in this area today, I'm inviting you to come. And I'm inviting you not to be afraid because if you have fear, God wants to deal with that today. You know, for many, fear has come in. Stuff has happened. You've become intimidated. Passion has been lost. Fire has been lost. I think some of you are saying, I don't want to live like this anymore today, Lord. I want you to set me free. If you have offense, it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It doesn't matter whether it was you or somebody else. If you've been offended and hurt and bent out of shape by something that has occurred and you've built a wall in your heart today, God says, today, I want to demolish that. I'm going to enable you to forgive and to let go and to move with healing and restoration in that area. In Jesus' name, amen. Is there something you need to acknowledge or repent of? Maybe you need to forgive somebody. Maybe there's a habit or something you've done that you know wasn't right, but you've never actually put it right with the Lord. Today he says, I want to set you free. I am the God who forgives, who heals and restores. If your heart condemns you, and you know, sometimes this happens. We know there's this thing in the background and we know it's hindering our walk, our confidence before the Lord. He's saying today, I want to deal with that. Perhaps you're here this morning and you have never acknowledged your need for a savior. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to forgive your sin and recognized that he has paid the price and that you cannot do it by yourself. Today he wants you to know that he has died once for all on the cross for you and that if you invite him in and confess and really allow him to move in your life, 
and exchange your sin for his peace and his forgiveness. He wants to do that today. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that your oil of healing, your oil of joy, your oil of gladness will just be released right now in this place, oh look at I'm inviting you to come forward, not because I need you to, but because it's a, an act of faith and worship and commitment. So stop worrying about who's looking or who might see or who's around you. Just come and press into the Lord right now. Come and meet with him and let him deal with whatever it is that you need to deal with. Holy Spirit is here. He is not the one who condemns. He is the one who forgives and restores. There's no shame in coming. None. Nobody's judging. We're all joyful that today God is going to move in this place. There's going to be freedom. People are going to be set free. People are going to be empowered. People are going to be encouraged. Long-standing habits and addictions are going to be broken right now in Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. I'm going to invite our ministry team, Pastor Evelyn, those who pray would you please come forward and pray, lay hands. And Lord, I'm just asking you empower the prayer team, the ministry team right now. Release your power into them right now as they pray for others, oh Lord God. Release your power, set free in Jesus' name. I'm gonna ask you to pray after me for a moment. Praise you, Jesus. I ask all of you who are still in the congregation, stretch out your hand towards those who need prayer right now. Let's join together as a mighty army to pray and to break whatever needs to be broken. Stretch out your hand, raise your voice in praise because God is gonna move in this place. There's gonna be freedom, there's gonna be joy, there's gonna be restoration in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you right now. Lord, I confess to you today I've drawn back. I've drawn back because of fear or disappointment or offense. Lord, I've let something in that needs to go today. Lord, today I return to you. Come and breathe on me. Breathe on each one here. Holy Spirit, breathe in Jesus. Lord, deliver each one from their oppressors. Set them free from disappointment, from grief. Set them free, O oh Lord God, from everything that holds them back. Praise you, Jesus. As you are standing, I ask you to recommit again to what the Lord has called you. Heavenly Father, I recommit to my assignment today. I recommit to you, O oh Lord God. I recommit to an intimate relationship with you, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. We worship you. We know you are moving. We know you are healing. We know you are setting free. We know you are breaking every chain in Jesus' name. Every mindset raised against the knowledge of truth, I break it in Jesus' name. Come on, Spirit. Lord Jesus, I stand in my pastoral office now and I speak into the spirit realm. And I take authority, oh Lord God. I take authority over every controlling power. I find your operation in the lives of the people here. Every tormenting spirit, I command you now. And to release everyone who is bound in Jesus' name. You will release people. People are free in this room. In the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. In Jesus' name, I bind every witchcraft, every fear, every disappointment, every bitterness, every grief, every tormenting spirit. Spirits of death, of destruction.
expression of bitterness, of hatred, of self-hate, of sorcery, of divination. So it's a wrong, it's a wrong, you're the reason. Of feeling not good enough, of shame. To In Jesus' name, go now. Holy Spirit, feeling in power. Everyone here right now, Lord God. I take authority over every unclean spirit in Jesus' name. Everything that besets the mind. I bring its power in Jesus' name. And I restore in Jesus' name joy. I restore peace. I restore power. I restore Lord Jesus. A sense of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your name I release the oil of gladness. I release a song of praise. Overflow in the truth, which breaks the power yeah, of every depression. So the word says, I put on the garment of praise. You're the reason we We all say, Amen. 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 Praise your name, O Lord God. If you haven't had prayer, just lift your hand up so we know that no one has prayed with you yet. Praise your Lord God. Prayer team, can you just um, watch out for those who have their hands up and, and lay hands and pray right now? In Jesus' name. Praise. Spirit of you. Spirit of God. For fresh hearts, we need your presence. Oh, your kingdom come, your will be done. Here us, here
lift his name. The Lord has done great things. Amen. upon testimonies shall flow in Jesus glorious and mighty name we have prayed go ahead go, go ahead and jam your hands together for the Lord as you take your seats thank you very much Pastor Shivers and please go ahead and so a word of prayer as well that out of the out of the abundance that he has blessed us with that the Lord will replenish in mighty ways in the name of Jesus Father, Father, we thank you for, you have used the servants to speak to us, to minister to us this morning. And we ask that you, should, you will replenish in multiple folds, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We'll be shorting the service down very, very shortly. Just a few things um, as well, just like to talk about. Um, earlier, we talked about um, appreciation. Um, day for our pastor, our pastors, um, that will be next Sunday. Um, just to make it easier for you, media, if you can help me, please put up the um, QR code. Um, earlier it was mentioned that we have a kudo board if you want to appreciate our pastor. So if you have your mobile phone, just yank it out right now, scan that QR and, you know, love on your pastors as well. Send a message, send a photos, do a short video, do that very, very quickly and they would really appreciate that. And, um, while we are doing that as well, there are some very, very special people here today that we would like to acknowledge and recognize. So if today is your first time joining us in a service like this, we would like to appreciate you. We would like to recognize you. Please do us the honor. Just signify by raising your hands. Just wave at me. Oh, thank you very much. I see a hand waving there. Oh, I see another hand waving there. Thank you very much. Please, those that are around them, show them the love of the solid rock. Show them show them how, how we love on, on them here. Thank you very much for being here. This is the Solid Rock Church and our pastors here are uh, Pastor Emmanuel and Pastor Evelyn Mike. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel is not here to meet with you today, but I'm very sure when he returns, he'll be glad to have a handshake with you. But Pastor Evelyn will be meeting with you. So at the end of this service, please don't be in a hurry to leave. You are one of our special, uh, you are VIPs in the service.
service today. So we'd like to appreciate you. We'd like to get to know you better. So in front here, Pastor Evelyn will be waiting right here to have a handshake with you and to talk with you a bit more. So please don't be in a hurry to leave uh, at the end of the service. And just the last thing mm. I will talk about for today, uh, we, we mentioned it earlier. Um, on Tuesday, we'll all be gathering here. The National Praise Day will be holding right here. We'll be giving all the glory and all the blessings unto the Lord. Now, we are the host, so we are hosting all the other um, believers all around the country. So please make it here to be a part of that. Thank you very much. Um, without any further announcements, um, I would like to ask us, please let us rise. And um, as we close this service, if you have a neighbor beside you, please look into your neighbor's eyes and say to them, this week shall be your best week yet. Now, say it like you mean it. In case your neighbor is not looking, look, looking like it means to you, please look for another neighbor. Say, this week shall be your best week yet. Your testimony shall be the next testimony we shall hear. Brother, nobody is saying it to you. Let me say it to you. Thank you for tuning in to today's service. We hope you were blessed. Please follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Indicated here. Thank you again for tuning in and see you next time.